Yeah. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our October 10th, 2022 Airport Advisory Board meeting. I hope the volume's better this month. Wonderful. Let us know if it isn't. Um, we'll kick off with a roll call, please. You just might want to note, Kayla, if you just want to introduce yourself as... Hi, guys. Thank you, Phil. (laughs) (laughs) This is Kayla, and she's uh, going to fill in for our um, board secretary for a while, today and maybe more. Um, And also, just for the record, so Phil Greenwald, Transportation Planning Manager, staff, and then Marsha Martin, Councilmember Martin, is here also. So just to fill that in, we'll be good. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Kayla. Um, first up on our agenda is our public invited to be heard. I have two people who signed up on the sheet. Um, you're welcome to come now. You're welcome to come at the end, um, or both if you'd really like to. Um, first on our list is Al Manley. Oh, yeah. You going in order? I was going in order on the sign-up oh. sheet, but <laughs> I, I, you know, if you guys want to mix it up, that's fine with me. So if you can um, start your comments, name and address, please. Uh, you've got five minutes. Hi, Al Manley, 940 Range View Lane, Longmont. Um, I'm here representing myself and also some members of the LOPA Association out at the airport, Longmont Operators and Pilots Association. Um, with the advisory board packet that came out this afternoon, or when I received it, um, the new, was that the new lease that was in there? Uh, that's a draft version. When will it be adopted? Um, so can I remind you, oh, comments okay. have to be addressed okay. to the board. We can't do a Q&A I'm for sorry, the city I'm sorry, attorney's office. I'm a newbie at this. No, it's okay. It's really frustrating that we when can't, will, but we can't. <laughs> when will the advisory board, or the advisory board, when will the new lease be adopted? Can anybody answer that? Okay, okay, no questions, okay. Well, anyway, the concerns that were, uh, that I received were really two items. Number one, 20-year leases are not really acceptable because most banks will not finance hangar builds or developments with leases that are less than 30 years. That's, that's number one. I mean, this was not just from one person. Number two, the city should not have first right of, refu- re- first right of purchase for hangar value is what two parties agree to. Um, Sometimes it's difficult to get appraisals on hangers for multiple reasons. Um, no recent hangar sales for one. Market conditions such as rapid devaluations and currency of currency slash inflation, hangar shortages, and individual desires. So these are two big hitters that were on the lease. Um, people are very concerned about these and. It's very important. Thank you. Thank you very much for the comments. Um, Next on our list, I have Steve Shook, if you'd like to. Again, start with name and address, and you have five minutes. Thanks. Uh, Again, I'm Steve Shook, 2022 Braeburn Court here in Longmont. Um, I have uh, submitted my application to join the board. I just wanted to introduce myself and give you a little bit of background. Uh, I've come from Monterey, California, where I've been involved with the Monterey Airport District for over 30 years. I have a 42-unit hangar development uh, that I currently manage and built. Uh, Excuse me. I've built uh, many projects at the Monterey Airport um, and have consulted with the previous management on uh, leases and not only my own, but uh, to advise the management on certain issues with leases. 
So I have that experience that I could bring to the board along with the construction that I've done. I'm a retired general contractor developer <clears throat> and um, I also own my hangar at the airport which I have the current lease on and uh, I'm retired and have the time to help out if I can. Thank you. Oh, one last thing I, I wanted to mention. Um, in regards to the lease, um, Al is correct on the 30 year. Also, he's cor um, he didn't mention if a person is going to sell a hangar that has under a 30 year, he can't do a 1031 exchange. So uh, that's one issue and um, which is an important issue when you're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. So just wanted to throw that out at you. And anyway, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, those are the only two that were on the sign up sheet. Would anyone else like to come up and speak? Come on up, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is David Paul, P-A-U-L-E. My address is 3500 Berkeley Avenue, Boulder, Colorado. And I've been using your fine airport for a decade, maybe a little more. I've got a hangar here now. And I got a draft copy of your lease at four tonight and canceled everything else that I had on my agenda for this evening and came down here. So, hi. <laughs> and I have a few comments about the hangar lease and I'm going to address them by the paragraph number in the draft copy, okay? So 2.1, my hanger is a condominium hanger, which I can't remove under this clause. It's part of the structure of the whole building. And my lease includes my half of the ramp. So if I had to remove the whole thing, I'd have to remove the concrete in the ramp to the midline of the ramp. So it's a 72 foot ramp. I'd be taking out 36 feet of it. This would have an impact on the aircraft, on the hangars directly across from me and on the north side of me, which is the end of the ramp area. So that would be kind of an impact. Also the cost of the demolition and where to put it and all that. If the city is buying my hangar under paragraph 2.2, there's gotta be a time limit or my purchaser would walk away leaving me at the city's mercy. 3.1, the initial rent under this lease shall not be greater than the rent I'm currently paying. It's not arbitrary. 3.3, um, this is very open-ended and says that I'd need to pay the same fees and assessments as commercial operators. I'm just an old retired guy. I use my hangar for my personal non-commercial use. So, there needs to be a little bit more thought that goes into this because what you'd assess to a commercial operator isn't necessarily applicable to somebody like me. 4.3, I need the ability to hire any maintenance person. I can't be limited by this clause. Some maintenance requires special capabilities and tools like the biannual pedostatic test that I'm required to do by the FAA. I don't have the capability, there's none on the airport, but there are a couple of itinerant people who come by, they're qualified to do this and they come out to my hangar, spend an hour, we chat, they do the job and, this, and then they leave. And they may or may not be associated with your airport, they may not have signed in. Um, section or paragraph 4.5, some amateur built aircraft may be assembled at the hangar per FAA guidelines. They're not actually airplanes until they're registered. And before receiving their end number, this could all happen. So it might not be possible for every owner to comply with this particular requirement. It's not an unreasonable requirement. It's just, it doesn't cover every situation that could actually occur. Since I'm building an airplane myself, I'm kind of sensitive to this one. Uh, 5.1, et cetera, it's kind of long. 
This permits the city to add various new requirements to my hangar without recourse. For example, you might say that I have to have a loft or a bathroom or, I don't know, hot and cold running water, I don't know. Um, maybe I have to have a bar, God knows. 5.1.7 in this paragraph says that I need to come up with a major portion of that money up front, the renovation money, give it to the city as a bond and doesn't commit the city to return it to me after completion. So that's, that's wrong. You can't just take my money and uh, say, okay, thank you. I understand the temptation. 5.2, this doesn't limit any new utilities that the city might require me to connect to. For example, right now I'm not connected to the very fine internet capability. What is it, next light? I don't have that. I don't have running water. I don't have the bathroom. It's just a hangar. I store my airplane there. And you guys could rationally say, well, you should connect to this. Well, why? And this would require me to do it. So this is kind of a problem. And 7.1 on signage. I own my hangar, and if I agree to this, that means that I've surrendered any First Amendment rights I might have. For example, there might be... I'm sorry, your five minutes are expired. Oh, okay. Real quick, though. I, uh, no, you're welcome to come back at the end and have another five minutes. Thanks. Thank you for the comments. Would anyone else like to... Come on up. Uh, Ron Krenzel, 1219 North 61st, Longmont, Colorado. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to change the tone a little. Uh, I, I haven't been at these meetings for a long time, and they didn't exist for a while. I was at the last one, and they were, we get so entangled in all this stuff that has nothing to do with aviation, electrification and plumbing and leases. and We should sit back and think about this. What is an airport? What is an airport? It's a runway. It's a place where planes take off and land. Everything that happens after that is because of the runway. And we have probably one of the worst runways to do everything we're talking about in the state of Colorado. Nothing that, you, that, that is being discussed in leases and, and electrification and sewers and FBOs and new FBO buildings are all strangled because we have a terrible runway. This has been addressed for at least 15 years, I think, maybe more. Uh, <clears throat> it's very obvious that an FBO cannot survive at the Longmont Airport. <clears throat> If you don't, if a small FBO does not have the revenue of jet fuel, just isn't possible. General aviation has changed a lot in the, in the last few years. We have an enormous amount of home-built small airplanes at the Longmont Airport now. They're not economic contributors to the airport. You need planes that need maintenance. You need planes that bring people in and take people away. <clears throat> the Longmont Airport, and I think it's by design on the city's part. It isn't really, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out if you have a shitty runway, you don't, you're not gonna get many planes in there. Uh, the opportunity has come before to expand the runway. It should be the only discussion at all by the city and the airport advisory board if they really are dedicated to make the Longmont Airport a significant and important economic contributor to the city of Longmont. <clears throat> if you look at every surrounding town, and I'm not, we all know the, the, the definitive parameters of the Longmont Airport. 
all that has ever been suggested is it will allow s safely and effectively corporate small jets and personal jets to come in or turboprops to come in fuel and take off with fuel uh, that is the only way an FBO can survive and it can survive that way because it will attract airplanes on the airport to build hangars that require maintenance that need services there is absolutely no reason to build an FBO at the Longmont Airport because there's no reason for general commercial aviation, private aviation to come into Longmont. They can't fuel, there's no services, <clears throat> and the runway is totally inappropriate. So it's just a, you know, it's just a different way of looking at the whole goal over the next few years. If the goal is not to do this, which it has been for years and years, the decision is made. All of this advisory board meeting is a, really a waste of time. The people will have their leases that are here, and the airport will not change at all for the next 50 years. Thanks. Thank you. Would anyone else like to uh, speak? Come on down. I see two more. And if you can My name is Howard Morgan. I live at 1932 Amethyst in Longmont. I'm a former chairman of this body, president of the Hangar Owners Association, which is Longmont Owners and Pilots Association. My first comment is that <clears throat> we're supposed to get this, uh, I really desired to get this notification of the meeting days before the meeting. I got it at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, fortunately, one of our members found it in the city uh, uh, website. So it needs to be sent out. We've asked for it before. It hasn't gone out. It needs to go out to everybody on the airport at least five days before the meeting so we know what we're talking about. Uh, number two, like I said, I've only had uh, a couple hours to look at this thing, and uh, this lease aggravates the hell out of me, I'll tell you. We uh, LOPA people have worked hard with this population to get 30-year leases. And we did on the last uh, election get the city charter changed to where everybody in the city can get a 30-year lease. Now the airport's coming up with a 20-year lease. The problem with a 20-year lease is it, it kills any investment in the airport because people can't borrow money on a 20-year lease on leased uh, property on leased land. So you've killed any investment, which has been killed for years anyhow, on the airport. So, and we've already seen some 30-year leases with 30-year extensions, which uh, we hear a rumor that... Uh, that there's a 50-year limit, which is untrue. I've talked to the regional manager of FAA in Seattle. I've talked to the AOPA. I've also talked to the manager over to Greeley. Greeley has a 30-year lease with a 30-year extension. Also in this lease, uh, I read real quick, a buyout provision, which I don't understand, and I, I have serious doubts about where that's going. I can't see the city buying hangars and then competing with the investors on the airport. And the investors on the airport are the hangar owners and they're people that rent hang hangars. And if, if the hangars would go away and the investors would go away, this airport would die a sudden death because we, the hangar owners, support this airport with our uh, somewhere around a half million, uh, leave I could tell you, a half million dollars a year, and uh, and frankly, the city treats us, te uh, treats us like crap as being one of the biggest investors in the, in the area. Uh, another point which you may not know is the recent 
impact statement, the economic impact statement, uh, gives the uh, airport a number of $60.04 million. $64.04 million, and a city won't put a nickel in this airport. If you go to any, any city with 100,000 population and compare to this airport, you'll find that this airport is bad. It's one of the worst in the country. <clears throat> uh, we need a third year lease so we can get some investment. We need the city to put some money into this to make it a real airport. We have jet traffic in here almost every day now and uh, other high-end airplanes. They're not coming here for lunch. They're coming here to do business. And I can tell you as, as a former corporate pilot, people in that position look at the airport and, and uh, relay that to the, the whole city management. And uh, we don't look very good. We've got a terrible FBO. The city needs to build one. And uh, get somebody to operate it and start making this airport do something. It needs a longer runway, which we've, uh, back in uh, about 2012, we did a master plan. And one of the things on that plan was a thousand extra feet of runway. Not extra, actually just a thousand feet wouldn't be extra. And uh, so far we've gotten nowhere on that. So I would like to see some aggressive action on the city's part to make this airport a real airport. And I'd also like to see this lease thing. Thank you, solved five minutes are expired. And uh, get a 30 year lease, thanks. Thank you. David Schenk, um, box 464 Longmont. Um, I have a thing that I would like to hand out to all of the members of the advisory board, if you could do that, please. Um, there's questions here. This was written by Keith Griffith, one of the more intelligent people on the airport. Very good questions. In addition to those questions, which I think we should all deserve answers to tonight during the discussion of the lease, I would like to know what other departments within the city has restricted the lease to 20 years. It just seems like there's absolutely no reason whatsoever for that. Please, uh, I've handed out all these questions. I'd like to see them all discussed. I know that I could ask these questions, but none of you would answer them. So please discuss them during your discussion tonight. Thank you very much. Would anyone else like to speak? Seeing no one here, we'll move on to approval of September 2022 minutes. Um, I know at least I have some revisions, as does Melinda. Would anyone like to start off comments on this? Vice Chair Jordan. Uh, on six information items, the uh, item one or I, the lease term update, it says, Levi stated that going forward, all new leases will be 30 years with a renewal option of another 20 years, not to exceed a maximum of 50. I heard 2020 at that point, and then in looking at the lease document, I see in the draft 2020. Do you remember saying that? I think what was said last time is I, we were talking about what theoretically could be acceptable. Um, at that time, we hadn't made any determinations on what they would be. Um, but after bouncing that off the FAA, I think that was used as an example of something that would legally be acceptable. So do you, are you, are you okay with six, um, item number one, lease terms update? Because it's a statement with Let your name Let me see if I can it. get my document here. Okay. And then the, while you look at that, um, two, what's that? On six. She said, um, page six. two information items, lease yeah. term update. And then on page. Up on the screen now. And then on page three, um, just my name is uh, with an A N. And it's, it's right every place else, just in the two motions. So six, um, that'd be one. So, and it's, Levi stated that. Here we go, here we go. Six, 
six one. Oops. Now that I think what was stated was that they could be okay. thirty years with their new option. So that would okay. we were talking about what would be acceptable. That would not exceed. Yeah, that makes logical. That would not exceed the fifty years. So that was it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Does anyone else have anything? Is that you? Oh, so sorry. It only gives me a number here. Um, <laughs> Mr. Robeson. Thank you. Uh, just a minor thing. Um, see, page two at the top with the bullet points, it's talking about the FAA inspections, and it just says, will be conducted the week of September uh, something. So I don't remember what was said, but I figured we should oh. fill that in somehow. can't recall the top of my head what week that was. We can certainly look up that date and put it I in mean, there. Just though. for accuracy of the minutes as well. Would, would a week in September. That would yeah. be logical. That's a good point, Phil. We could be a week in September. It was a week in September. In September works yeah. for me. In September. Okay. Anyone else? All right, then I've got two here. Um, on the top of page three, um, this is a continuation of action item 7-1, reselected board member for the RFP for engineer. It shows motion carried 6-0. Uh, the motion should have carried 5-0, and I uh. abstained. And then on page four, last sentence before adjournment, it currently says Levi Brown, airport manager, stated that they are not allowed to build another FBO per grant assurance guidelines. Where the correct, it should have said, um, you stated they are not allowed to prohibit building another FBO yeah. per grant assurance guidelines. Correct. Kind of an important difference <laughs> yeah. in the what's there. Yeah. Um, all right, so I've got then our changes week in September. Leases could be 30 years. Uh, the motion, Vice Chair Jordan's name spelling. Prohibiting the FBO. What did I miss? <laughs> Are we good? Would anyone like to make a motion to um, accept the minutes as amended per this discussion? Mr. Robeson. I move that we approve the minutes as amended. Is there a second? Go ahead, Steve. I second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? We're done with minutes. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Updates from the airport manager. All right. Updates. All right. Just a few items uh, this month for quick updates on. Um, the one I'll go ahead and start with was, because it ties into one of my items here was the, we did have the FAA come out and do their inspection of the airport. It was a much delayed inspection. Uh, the pandemic kind of pushed them back quite a ways. Um, for the most part, they're very happy, very happy with the state of the surfaces, the general condition of the airport, uh, some very positive uh, comments on our mowing, which fortunately we'd just gotten a new mowing contractor uh, a week or two before they'd gotten there. Uh, all excellent, they did have take issue However, with the prairie dogs on the airfield, um, they are invading the runway safety area on the field. Um, we received a letter from the FAA stating that they would like all prairie dogs removed from the airport premises. Uh, moving forward with that, we've reached out to the uh, city's wildlife uh, control uh, unit. Um, we're currently um, in the middle of setting some meetings up with some private contractors. Uh, we're probably going to do a push. Of course, we're going to follow county and Boulder guidelines for mitigation, uh, but we'll probably be doing a significant push on prairie dog mitigation, um, which is, is great for me because I'm sure that'll be a little bit more effective than me out there with my little smoke canisters. Uh, so um, that'll be a good positive thing moving forward for safety at the airport. Um, a second big update that I have for the airport is the Southwest Sewer Project is about, as of this morning, two weeks um, from them turning dirt over on that. Um, contracts have been signed. Uh, Pre-meetings have all been conducted. Um, the contractors uh, confirmed this morning have put in all orders for the supplies they need. Manholes have already been produced. Uh, they're starting to look at bringing stuff to the job site and stage. Um, so things are moving forward quickly on that. 
uh, front also. Um, I guess an, another little quick thing I can put in here that I forgot to put on my list that we just did the other day was uh, currently um, starting a round of uh, new CIP stuff um, with uh, CDOT and the FAA, um, moving forward with what we're going to want to do for projects uh, in the future. Um, honestly, right now, the, all the stuff that's kind of on um, the short-term list and stuff like that is stuff that's already come before this board, so no huge changes moving forward with that. Um, wildlife fence, uh, pavement rehabilitation, stuff like that at the moment. Right. And that is what I got for uh, airport updates. Anyone have any questions for Levi before we move into information items? Vice Chair Jordan. Um, do you anticipate any impact with the sewer project on airport activity? There will be minimal impact. Um, I'm actually very uh, pleased with the, how little it, it, it sounds like it's going to be. As the sewer project comes across to the south end of the airport there, they will temporarily have to shut down the two taxi lanes that go into that south part of the airport. But the contractors are... Uh, very positive. They can move as quickly as possible. They're only going to close one down at a time, right? They're going to essentially dig, lay pipe, and then cover as they go. So it's not like they're going to dig, a, dig mm -hmm. a giant trench and then come back and put all the pipe in. So before they've even started digging further down the line, they'll have the taxi lanes up and running again. Uh, pretty much take whatever time it takes the concrete to cure okay. to get those closed down. So no closures. You don't anticipate any closures. No, not not anticipate. Not really. Or maybe a detour, but not a closure. Yeah. Okay. Um, kind of depending, I guess, on the size of your aircraft, you might be able to maneuver it around on that south to get out either taxi lane. Okay. Um, but very minimal on closure time down there. Okay. Yep. Um, the other question was: We used to get the budget in our packet, and then um, when David passed away, a lot of, you know, we were struggling to get things done as it was. Um, we haven't been getting a budget again. Can we? Move back into getting a budget. I can. We can in certainly. The packet in the. Um, I'll. I'll look into that and kind of see. The PNL basically is yeah. is usually been a part of our packet. I'll ask about that and kind of see what the city's kind of vision of what the board is. In the I field. know David took the report that he received and he reworked it into a format for us. I think the the city format was not um, very digestible, and um, so he <laughs> so he did rework it, and so that effort with you know everything that was happening that fell to the to the wayside so i'll put that on my that. my check in to list thank you. thank you yep thank you uh, melinda tallis go ahead yeah thanks levi i appreciate the update from the faa i would like to get a little bit more uh, information on the surfaces as several of the members including mr morgan pointed out that there's some issues with the runway so Given that the FAA doesn't have any issues with our services, our surfaces, um, was your expert analysis of what the surfaces of our runways and uh, taxiways and so on? Surfaces are excellent, and that was also echoed in, echoed in the FAA report. Um, there are some panels on the ramp that are cracked and slated for being repaired. Um, as an airport, we're actually fairly fortunate. We have a very nice concrete long life runway. Um, it's a nice one. I think most of the comments before were kind of directed towards the length of the runway as far as the, the quality of the surface as opposed to the actual surface itself. The surface itself is in very nice shape. Mr. Bliss. I think I forgot what I was going to ask. <laughs> uh, how long is the sewer project going, going to last? If I recall correctly, the, uh, the contractors have up to 70 days to do it, but even in pre-meetings, um, they kind of shook their head and said, we do not want to be here that long. Um, they didn't tell me how long it would be, but uh, I think they're trying to push through in just you know less than a month, hopefully a few weeks. They're very motivated to finish it quickly, but again, I'm not sure. So they're going to take it to a spot at the midfield? They're taking it and, about to where the wind tee is. And then what happens from there? Um, that's kind of the extent of the project. So it's about getting the infrastructure in there so we can tap into it in the future. What infrastructure are you talking about? The sewer. I know, but you said 
what's going to happen from there? Is that going to be up to the individual hangar owner to um, run the sewer to the hangar, or what, what's going to happen? Moving, that's the extent of the scope of this project as it exists today. Hmm. Um, one other thing, we'll, we'll get together uh, personally with this, but you don't have my email because I'm getting everything that you write to the hangar owners. My friend who's a hangar owner sends it to me, so I'm not getting it, and I don't know exactly why you, you don't have my email. So we'll get together after. Yeah, absolutely. And lastly, I just want to say I agree with just about everything the audience said tonight. Okay. Councilmember Martin, please. Uh, you have to. Oh, you did. I think I did. <laughs> yes. I'm figuring out the touch screen, but I thought I got it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, forgive me for, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm in order at this point, but it's kind of an urgent question. Um, I was on the uh, airport advisory board in 2018 and 19 as well. And at that time, um, everybody took the uh, comprehensive plans plan for extending the runway as uh, a goal and then uh, you know for a, I was away not on this board for a while and when I came back uh, there was uh, I think some confusion has has um, either the FAA rules or Boulder County's land ownership changed such as to make the runway extension uh, infeasible because um, I I'm Confess that I'm confused about mm -hmm. that, but that was my understanding was that we can't extend the runway now. So I can answer a little bit to that. Um, it is true a few years back, the FAA changed the rules on runway safety areas, which required the acquisition of more land. Um, so if we did want to extend the runway, we would have to acquire land. That land would have to be to the west of the airport. So not completely undoable. Um, there was a second part of your question. What was the first part of it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, that, that was essentially it was that yeah. the land, because I thought there was more to it than that, which is that, that the um, ownership status of the land itself has also changed, which would make it difficult for us to acquire it. it and it that's something that, that um, yeah. Phil may know more about, because um, <laughs> <laughs> you wish you did. Yeah, um, because, uh, you know, we've... We've approached Boulder County yeah. about several land uses on that, you know, west of the airport mm -hmm. parcel, and they have really not been very eager to negotiate with us on any of that land use. Yeah. And, of course, that's that's always going to be a, an obstacle. And moving forward at, with the airport, we can always have the discussion about potentially uh, extending the runway. It's going to take a commitment on everyone's part if we want to do that. The city's going to have to be on board. Um, the landowners are going to have to be on board. And most importantly, the FA is going to have to be on board. Um, to my understanding, that was a major hang-up. Uh, previous administrations or managers kind of ran into roadblocks with that. So new discussions would have to be had and new bridges built uh, in selling that idea moving forward if we yeah. wanted to do that. Well, so uh, the reason for me asking the question is that I just wanted to eliminate the confusion. Uh, Things have changed. Mm -hmm. It is less feasible than it was before. And uh, there are there are new roadblocks. There there are challenges for sure. Thank yep. you. But I would just say the current master plan still calls for it, and that has not changed either. That's true, <laughs> Mr. Robeson. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to add on to what Councilmember Martin was saying. Everything you guys said was correct, and I looked into it a little bit because this is one of my sub projects as an advisory board member. So not only is there county land, but because of the angle of the runway, there are two individual farmhouses that would be impacted, yeah. plus one commercial company, uh, the NAR company. So there's four different parcels that we would have to acquire uh, in order to even extend the runway one foot. So. Yeah, most of it we'd have to acquire. Some of it, if there was minimal intrusion onto the properties, we could get easements on, potentially. Yeah. Um, but that's there's going to be one that is not going to be an easement yeah. for sure. It's, but yes, <laughs> there for sure, I think we're on the... we know what that one is that that one would definitely have to be acquired yeah so yeah that's where we are anything else um i'm sorry mr bliss oh, 
Yeah, I just wanted to ask you, you said if we even extend it one foot, we have to encroach land that we don't. Yeah, because okay. of the changes to the runway safety zone. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say that in the microphone, because of the changes in the even, runway even if, safety area requirements. Even okay, if we. Right now, we're, we're actually out of LMCs right now. Oh, we are now. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. we're, yeah we were, we're operating good because we got in before the change rules. But if we did any changes, we would have to acquire more land for sure. Yeah. Do you have anything else on your update? That's what I had on my notes. So let's move on to information items then. Okay. Um, presentations for AAB discussions. So this is just kind of continuing it on and trying to keep open the dialogue of, uh, you know, moving forward with new discussion items. So presentations to include for the uh, discussions, one thing that I would just like to bring out was maybe next meeting we could just have a discussion about the sustainability of the airport and how we would like to move forward with that, just have a discussion on it. So that's my information item for that. Any Anyone have any comments on things they'd like to see? Um, agreement, disagreement mm -hmm. with Levi? All right. Um, Vice Chair Jordan. Um, so when we bring up a topic, then how do we, how does that get legs? So we say it, but then are you, would you present or do we need to? Uh, so I think a, a nice one for this one next time, maybe next, next month on information items, we have a, another little, you know, point that says, you know, additional items for discussion and on and behind that also sustainability and then we also have information so I'll kind of talk about the things that happen start an open dialogue and we get input back from the board too and then maybe that gets moved on to action items in okay. the next meeting or something like that. Would there be anybody from the city that an expert a subject matter expert that could come in and speak to us? I can't think aviation? of any restrictions uh, to that if we wish to do that. We could originally, originally we had talked about bringing in guest speakers mm -hmm. for you. So we, we were going to look into the guest speaker piece of that too. And we'll okay. have, we have city people who are part of the sustainability uh, program and part of their, they have an actual department. So that would be folks we might want to bring in as well and, and have that discussion with you. Perfect. Thank you. Levi, I would ask as part of that, um, this was going to be one of my comments later, but bring it up now. Um, there is the draft sustainability resolution. I'd mm -hmm. like to have that be part of the discussion as well. And that was kind of my concept is that it'd be a good point in the meeting to kind of bring that out. Too. Perfect. Yep. Um, you also mentioned CIP as something that's starting up. Mm -hmm. At the appropriate point, I'd like that to be one of the items that comes back as well. We will, in fact, I'll put that on my, my notes for the next meeting too. Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily need to be next meeting, depending on where we are in the development, but at the appropriate point, gotcha. uh, it would be good to bring it back. Anyone else? Pals, go ahead. Uh, on the uh, topic of the runway extension, has there been any sort of financial analysis on the increase in revenues from fuel versus the costs and when the break-even point would be? Uh, to my knowledge, there hasn't been any detailed uh, analysis beyond what was kind of touched base in the master plan, if you've if been through that document. Um, it is true, and it's point to talk about in the master plan, um, increasing runway length would... Uh, potentially allow, you know, well, it would allow a uh, small jet aircraft. We're still in the category of operating in our airport to come in and be able to land and take off without necessarily restriction. As a former uh, charter pilot myself, I can say that is a draw for an airport, certainly. Um, if I know that I can go from point A to point B without having to make a, a stop point C, um, I'm more likely to choose one airport over another. Um, so that's the benefit of a length. Um, to quantify it, we would have to have more research done than as, as far as dollars and cents goes. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. And yeah. I think that counts as sustainability, at least financial sustainability of the airport. So mm -hmm. I think that should also be covered. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Martin. Thank you. I have a question for the board. Um, if we were going to arrange presentations by either the sustainability staff or by an outside expert. Uh, what kind of length of presentation are you t thinking about? Because some, 
<laughs> exactly. There are people who would give you an hour, and I don't think you want that. Okay. So could... I, I heard a five minutes that may have been slightly in jest. I mean, I'm... I mean, I'm not even... I'm thinking 15. I, with I some like Q &A. that one. Yeah. I mean, I think it depends on the topic. It depends on, you know, if we have a ton of action items. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sustainability okay. in particular. Yeah. 15 minutes plus some Q&A. Ab absolutely Q&A. And I would probably put public comment in as part of that as well so that we actually get direct feedback on that topic, um, okay. which we've done with some of the some discussions as well. Love it. Okay. Thank you. That's simply my opinion, though. So if anyone has their own, please chime in. It seems logical to me. I agree. All right. Um, anything else on presentations for discussions? We'll move on then. Engineering consultant update. Phil. Good evening, members of the Airport Advisory Board. My name is Phil Greenwald, Transportation Planning Manager with the city. Uh, just a quick update. We are still working with our purchasing group uh, to make sure that we get the RFQ out now. We're going to do a request for qualifications instead of a strict strict proposal. So we're hoping that goes a little quicker. Um, but we still need your help, and we do have the, more, the board member who volunteered, so we'll have that. Uh, we'll get that information out to you once we know where we are with the purchasing department for us. So it is taking a little longer than we had hoped. Uh, I'll be honest with you, and we are working to uh, make sure we get that out very soon. We need to have it done quickly per um, CDOT regs. So we are working uh, diligently to get that done, but it is hung up right now in our purchasing group. Thanks. Thank you. My mic from Mr. Robeson. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Phil, I'm not that familiar with RFQs and RFPs, but I do know an engineering firm that's interested in submitting a bid. Do they need to do anything before those come out, or they just wait for them to come out? Oh, oh, oh. Board Member uh, Robinson, uh, we ask that they wait for the RFQ to be released, okay. and then that we have a bit. There's a bid process. It's very formalized, so okay. we need to make sure they follow all those pieces. We can talk to them uh, until the RFQ goes out, and then we can't. We have to stop talking to them once that hits the street. So that'll be the formal piece of that, and okay. that'll be uh, pretty evident once we know that. We'll uh, make sure we get that information out to the board. Okay. And so you know what time it is, what, t what timing that is as well. Anyone else? Well, let's move on to the uh, to airport leases. I know, I know this is uh, one we actually all want to talk about. All right, good. All right, so I think attached to all your packets should be a draft example of that lease. Um, I would like to point out this is just a draft. That is not a final form of that lease necessarily. Um, so I'd like to just discuss a couple items in here. Um, the first one is that term, which is section 2.1, uh, which you can see it should be, if it's the same as mine, highlighted in red on that. Um, coming back to the discussion and then back and forth what occurred between the city's attorney's office and advisors we talked to, um, we definitely, we can't do 30 years with 30 year option to renew, so that's out. So the term of the lease really could can be left to be negotiable between each lease. Um, I'm kind of proposing moving forward that we do make that initial a 30 year. It's just for the, uh, the convenience of people and getting loans and stuff like that. Um, as far as what we would want to do uh, for an optional renewal, I would certainly pass that back potentially for comment to, to the board and stuff like that too, if there wanted to be some discussion about what we could do for renewal. But I am suggesting that moving forward that we do change the base uh, rate uh, term to 30 years moving forward. Can we start with that? Since okay. I know there's a lot on term and kind of move section by section. Okay. Um, Russell, I see you're in there. Do you want to talk about term? Okay. Mr. Robeson then. Thank you. Um, if you're really committed to saying we can't do 30 plus 30, I would move that we just recommend we do 30 plus 20. That would be hopefully acceptable to everybody in the audience as a 30 year lease. No? I'm seeing some nods and some, I mean, it's a 30 year lease, so that, I think that's what everybody's going for. Is there any reason to consider anything else? We've heard tons of comments that say we want 30. Russell, did you have an, I heard move in your, <laughs> I was that an official yeah. verb that I, you were making a motion? Uh, sure, I move that the board recommend that we do a 30 year with a, 
with a 20 year option to renew. Would anyone like to second that? I know there's discussion. I'll let you discuss. Would anyone like to second it first? Are you seconding, Steve? I either need a second on the motion and we can discuss it. You'll second? All right. Second so we can discuss. All right. I see a lot of people in queue. I'm sorry, guys. Um, Talos, you're up first. Steve, I will get to you. I promise. Okay. Um, so we're discussing the motion, which is the recommendation 30 plus 20. I'm doing my best. Talos, go ahead. Uh, you know, I, I really respect Mr. Morgan's experience having been on this board, and he seems to have done some research. Uh, Levi, have you spoken to the people that Mr. Morgan has? And he's, he seems very confident that the 30 plus 30 is doable. I, I'm not an expert, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, have you had discussions with him to see his point of view? Yes, and I actually also queried the FAA directly and said, if I were to offer a 30-year lease with 30th Opt Interview, I asked them directly, would you consider that a violation of grant assurances? And they told me, very to the point, yes, we would consider that a violation of your grant assurances. And that's from Mr. Mike Motz at the Federal Aviation Administration. He's the individual who oversees our grant assurances. Mm -hmm. uh, Councilmember Martin. Um, again, always just for information, um, but uh, since you have a contact with Mr. Motz, first I would like to know who the city attorney is that helped with this lease. Uh, that would be Christopher Robbie. Christopher Robbie, mm -hmm. okay. Um, because there might be a way out of that, especially if other airports are doing 30 plus 30, uh, and that is that you inspect the property that is at the time of renewal. You inspect the property and um, that is that is on the leased parcel, and if it can be certified to have a useful life of 30 more years, then you might be able to give a 30-year renewal, but otherwise the uh, hangar owner would have to settle for a 20-year renewal. Um, and I don't know whether that's been tried or not, but uh, I would like to see it tried if it's not, because I was a big proponent of 30-year leases, and I'd really hate to see that go away. Councilmember Martin, I just want to state that our attorney's office, as well as our city manager's office, has recommended strongly that we not do a 30-30, not do the 60 full lease. So that's what's come back to us as far as recommendations from both our city attorney's office and our city manager's office. So that's why we're moving forward with what we're saying uh, with the 30 plus 20. Okay, just for information, why did you go back to 20 on the initial? Because, I mean, we do need investment in the well, we, airport. Well, we, we're not going back to 20 on the initial. Oh, but it's in the, it's in so the draft. It, it's just, a, this is just a draft, so that's why at this first point I wanted to, to mention that we haven't said it yet, so it hadn't been changed yet. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I'm recommending 30 years and then the term to be up for discussion. So this was the, the draft in the form that we got it straight back from the city attorney's office. And that hadn't been addressed yet. <laughs> yeah. After our discussion, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll second that one, the attorney. <laughs> <laughs> um, Councilman Martin, anything else? Mr. Bliss. I just wanted to ask, what's the 50-year restriction? What is that? So I, I don't understand that. So I think most of us are familiar with the concept of grant assurances are. So mm -hmm. prior to receiving federal funded, we have to make assurances. We have to make promises to the, mm -hmm. the FAA that there are certain things we won't do. Um, so as one of the corrections we made in our minutes, we won't uh, restrict uh, competition on the airfield. And we can't stop someone from building a new FBO. You know, we can't say, no, you can't build an FBO here. One of the other ones we can't do is dispose of uh, land on the airfield. So the FAA has come out in uh, official uh, letters of recommendation um, from the people who decide whether we violate grants or not and said that if you lease uh, um, a piece of land uh, for more than 50 years, we consider you're essentially losing so much control of it that it's like you're getting rid of it, is essentially what they say. Um, so from a uh, you know, financial standpoint, 30 years is, is plenty to amortize your investment that you put into a piece of land. 
And so they see that kind of as the starting point, and we're allowed to offer up to 50 years. Um, moving forward, I would strongly recommend that we just don't default to a 50-year lease. That's still incredibly generous. Um, I've never been at an airport before that offers full 50-year leases starting right off the bat. Um, I certainly agree that starting with a 30-year lease makes a lot of logical sense, and particularly now that the city allows it, because that allows you to get loans, that allows you to put infrastructure, allows you to make paperwork way easier when you're trying to invest in the airport. Thank you. Steve, at the um, little danger here, I went Googling this afternoon mm -hmm. and found the FAA airport compliance manual, section 12, that is on review of aeronautical lease agreements. I'm just gonna read the section on term because I think it, it goes directly into this. Does the term exceed a period of years that is reasonably necessary to amortize a, a tenant's investment? Does the lease provide for multiple options to the term with no increased compensation to the sponsor? Most tenant ground leases of 30 to 35 years are sufficient to retire a tenant's initial financing and provide a reasonable return for the tenant's development of major facilities. Leases that exceed 50 years may be considered a disposal of the property in that term of the lease. And, I'm sorry, may be considered a disposal of the property in that the term of the lease will likely exceed the useful life of the structures erected on the property. FAA offices should not consent to propose lease terms that exceed 50 years. I'm, I'm all for 30 as our starting point. I don't even want to really have a debate on 20 versus 30 on that point, but the, that, that's where the 50 at least seems pretty clear to me as a non-attorney. Anyone else on term at least? Steve, go ahead, sorry. And then um, Melinda, I'll get you. So if you have a 30-year lease now, that's, you're not proposing to change that. You just mean that that 30-year lease, when it's over, it'll revert yeah. to a 20-year. So where we're at right now is in the delicate position with the FAA, where there have been some 30-year leases with theory to theory options to renew done on the airfield. And they are not happy, um, but we're in a position where management has changed, and they're not necessarily motivated to come here with all of their lawyers and start going after us right now. Uh, so that's kind of where this discussion started, uh, a, a finger wag and say, you can't do that. Uh, so I am at the moment more than happy to kind of not poke them and make them angry so that they do come out here and poke at leases that we have set up in that manner and just move forward with uh, their guidance. Vice Chair Jordan. I was going to ask if the city would uh, provide justification for their um, being against the 3030, but it sounds like that's mute. Mm -hmm. um, and then just to clarify that 20 year leases are still available. So if the hangar is older, I could take a 20 year lease. Oh, I'm recommending older, a 30 year lease okay. for that initial lease. So is 20 still an option? For uh, you say mean, an existing one of the older hangers that's so if someone just wanted to do a 20 year lease, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I absolutely. In, I want to do a 20. Okay. I'm recommending a 30 year uh, lease as kind of a starting point, mm -hmm. but it, as I kind of mentioned at the beginning, it's like it's all negotiable. Okay. So if I mean, I've got leases on the airport, we've done them for five years, I just did one for a year, um, okay. a little while ago, so. It's all negotiable. Okay, because yeah. The, yeah, the argument that at 50 years, the whatever structure was on it would have timed out um, doesn't hold true at our airport. We've got structures older than that. And then <laughs> I, I managed an airport that got hit by a tornado. So yeah. everything on the airport was new. Now we're, after, we're getting into yeah, the interesting so, discussions of evaluation of buildings and yeah. what is the life of a building and stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah, so it's making the assumption that you're talking about the original building. Yeah. And we do have quite a few of those that are mm -hmm. still standing. So, and then catastrophe where things have been replaced. Um, and the 29th year of a lease, and suddenly you've got a whole new building thanks to a tornado. So mm -hmm. um, few exceptions there, but as long as um, we have the 30-year option, because oh, yeah. we did fight hard to get that passed oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. as a city. And I'm with Marsh on that one. And it's uh, very, there's a very logical argument for that. Yeah. And, I mean, I can't think of any reason for us not to do it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other comments on term here before we move on to an another section? I think we, so I'll just make one kind of point of order for, for all of us. This is an information item tonight. We're not voting to recommend these changes. We're mm -hmm. not voting it forward. Um, I would encourage anyone who's listening to this, 
um, who disagrees with what we're talking about tonight um, to make that known at the last public invited to be heard and kind of bring those comments forward, presumably next meeting or the meeting after we will vote on advising council to adopt this as a new format. Um, so there is still more opportunity to continue commenting on this. Mr. Robeson, I s are, you are you reminding me that you still have your motion on the floor that we haven't voted on? No, I have another Please go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just realized it's in the same paragraph. Uh, it says the lessee shall have the option to negotiate with the city for renewal. Is that what you meant to say? I mean, it, to me, it should be the lessee shall have the option to renew the lease. So that's the standard uh, lease terminology that uh, came back from legal. So I haven't, I'd have to dive a little bit deeper into that if for comment, I suppose. I mean, they always have the option to negotiate with the city, right? There's yeah. no reason to put that in writing. Um, again, it was standard contract stuff that I assume the city put in there for a reason. Okay, well, to me that's worthless to have in there. So I would uh, have a conversation about that. I mean, at the end of a 30-year lease, if there's no option for renewal, you would have to negotiate a new lease, correct? Yeah. Okay. So how is that different from having the option to negotiate for renewal of the lease? I, again, I'd have to get into the details of the legal reason why this is put this way, but I assume it has been put here due to experience of past leasings. Russell, I think that's a good catch, though, because yeah. it makes this a 30-year lease hard stop as opposed to a 30 plus 20. So, well, I, I would I would love to hear more about that. This is for you. No. Yeah. Yes. Um, Palace? Yeah, just to add on, uh, if they're renegotiating, wouldn't that be a new lease? And then thus going around the whole issue with 50 years because then you could do 30 and then 30 and then 30 and then 30, right? I guess you could look at it in a positive way. Yeah, I, mean, I, yeah. I don't think there's anything that stops you from doing, yeah. you know, 100 yeah. years as leases as long as it's separate leases. Yeah, I mean, the and same. And the FA guidance, you can do that. The, it just know, can't be one long lease. Exactly. Methuselah could rent this, you know, <laughs> you know, over and over and over and over again as long as they renegotiated for each term. Um, and then, again, you know, any comments you have, anything that you'd like to, to change in here, this is straight from the city's attorney's office. So, you know, we're taking comments, and we can certainly ask them how they'd like to proceed forward or if they're doing things for a certain reason. Um, I'm going to bring us back to the motion that's on the floor which is to recommend um, to Levi that we do 30 plus 20, 30 year term, 20 year option. Any other further comments on that? All those in favor of making that recommendation to the airport manager, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? You have a recommendation. Okay. Um, move on um, from term to whatever the next one was that I interrupted you on. All right, so the next major item we have for discussion here is the addition or the, the changing of 2.2, which is essentially modifying a little bit of the city's first right of refusal. So the way that the leases have existed in the past, um, at the end of a contract, the city essentially has the uh, opportunity to purchase a piece of land. So at the end of a, of a, a lease, the city has the opportunity to come in and say, okay, you know, we want this chunk of land, we've got this plan, we've got that plan, um, we would like to develop this area for this or that. Um, the reality of the situation is very rarely do leases actually come to full term. Usually what happens is 15, 20 years into a lease, the lease gets sold, a new lease is generated. Uh, and 15, 20 years into that lease, the lease gets sold, new lease is generated. So in the past, there has never been really an opportunity to have any control of the land at the airport once it's put out for that initial development. Um, most airports uh, solve this by putting in a reversionary clause. I don't necessarily think that's the best idea for us at this moment. Um, I really kind of like the fact that um, when you come to this airport, that's not... Uh, just expected. Uh, most airports, certainly on the front range, that's expected. Um, you're going to have this chunk of land. You know, if you build an FBO, you got it for 50 years. 50 years, you know, the the city takes it. Um, I think it's not something we necessarily want to do right now. Just as to have a little bit of a, 
something that we can hold out there to developers and stuff like that and people who want to you know invest into the airport at the if you bring all this money to the airport at the end of your lease um, essentially it is evaluated and you get the value for what your building is so I think that's something that we can maintain that's my personal opinion um, to just kind of draw in some some um, more investment at the airport one thing that would be very nice is if the city did have the option to if they really wanted to do something to be able to control some land so another way of potentially solving that is to kind of increase our first right of refusal options so this doesn't necessarily force um, you know someone to give up their land or something like that but what it says is if you're selling your hangar the city gets the option to buy that hangar so if we've got you know Hangar, you know, 99, who was built on the field in 1941, which is right where we want a brand new FBO, and it's being sold next month, the city has the option to come in and say, no, we would like to buy that instead because we have this plan. Now, having said all of this, there is no grand plan for the city to necessarily develop anything on the airport. This is looking way down the road. So this is just a provision in... I'm hoping in leases moving forward that should a very strong need come up with the city or the airport community to change direction one way or the other, there's at least something in writing that would potentially allow the city to do that and not just kind of be stuck in this perpetual loop of little hangars being built and nothing kind of ever changing potentially or no power to change it on the airfield. Mr. Robeson. Thank you. Where to begin? Um, to even talk about reversion as something that is not appropriate at this time, leaving it open for a future time, I think is completely at odds with what everyone wants who uses the airport. Everyone in this audience would be aghast if that ever came to fruition. And so you're saying it's not that bad, but here we are giving first right of refusal, not just at the end of the lease, but anytime you want to sell your hangar. This is not as bad, but it is, uh, it is inhibiting investment. If, you don't, if the city does not want a bunch of little hangers, they've had ample opportunity to put money up and develop their own buildings and everything. This is something that is going to really turn people away from coming to this airport, from building hangers, from being at the airport. And... If you really insist on it, 30 days is absurd. Imagine you have something to sell and you have a buyer that says, I'm ready, I have the money, here it is. And you say, well, we have to wait a month for the city to decide. I mean, that's glacial. Are you kidding me? And, and again, this isn't something that there's plans to do. This is kind of an option to give the city some kind of leeway if they have plans or desires to do something on the airport to actually do it. Because right now, we have essentially no way of doing anything on the airport once a hangar has been built on a piece of land. Well, there's in lots of any land. any perpetuity in the future. There's lots of land that's not covered by little hangars. Um, that's true. Um, how much longer is it going to be that way? I'm thinking 100 years down the road here. Yeah, there'll, there'll be a new lease written before that time. I would say everything in blue in here, nice color to make it appear not as imposing. I mean, we have records of on the airport of essentially... There's parcels that have never come to full term because they've been sold over and over and over. So there's properties that, on the airport that have been out of the airport's hands for since the airport existed. That's what the city has wanted this whole time. When we, whenever we said, hey, city, why don't, would you be interested in coming in and operating some hangars? No, it costs money up front. That's what they've been for 10, 20 years. That's the way we've been operating. Okay. So are you saying that you know, just maybe they might go in a totally different direction and start spending huge amounts of money on the airport? I'm to, not sure. Well, we don't have any plans at the moment to, but you never know. To add a first right of refusal at every sale is going in the opposite direction of what we have been doing for 15 years. That's my main point. Thank you. Councilmember Martin. Um, thank you. Just... Uh, before there is a recommendation made, which is going to be next time, I would think that what needs to be done is we need to say what language the city charter requires, because there may be some reversion 
clause uh, in the charter, and I don't, I truly don't recall what the final language was, but we we do have to make sure. Um, okay. And as as Levi said, lots of airports have these. Um, but the other, the, the comforting thing is remember that this is the chartered lease terms for all city land, not just for hangars. City doesn't want to get a bunch of little old hangars, um, but the city really, really wants to be able to buy back um, infill properties um, and develop them, um, you know, so there are there are other motivations for um, for those terms than hangers and they're not necessarily directed at the airport which you know I'm just saying it may may make you feel better but before make before passing a recommendation on this let's be sure we have the charter language in front of us put that on my notes mr. bliss uh, Levi I just want to get very clear on this you're not talking about somebody somebody whose lease is up after 30 years that the city has the right to step in and take over that hangar if they want to renew their lease you're only talking about somebody who wants to sell their their hangar and then the city has first right of refusal is that yeah. correct so first right of refusal and again there's there's no spots on the airport that have been identified as we would, the city would want it to purchase. Um, so there's no plans using it. It's just first right of refusal is just you're selling your hangar to someone else and you just notify the city and the city has the option, if they want to, to say something and say, we would like to purchase that hangar. Hmm. Okay. So you're not talking about some eminent domain no. policy. And again, they, they would have to buy the hangar from you. So... You would still be selling it, uh, theoretically, and again, I'm not a lawyer. Yeah. You would be selling it for, I think the term is used, a bona fide offer. So yeah, what you the, get, yeah. It, 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 so the, the hangar owner gets, gets an estimate, no. and the city gets an estimate, and then you negotiate a price. Yeah. I read so, that in your thing. I just wanted to make sure that you're not talking about once your 30-year your lease is over and you want to renew for 20, the city's not going to step in by your... Oh no! Not this I, again. This is just. I, I think I, it, no. It's not going to. This isn't going to queue off every time that occurs. Okay. It's just a provisionary. Again, if you're selling it to someone else before the lease expires, then the yeah. city has the the potential to. At the current uh, lease, the city already has the option to purchase at the end of the lease, um, and it goes into the language of you know, you know, figuring out the quotes, you know. Purchasing it and or requiring the original tenant to tear down, yada, 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 all that, um, that standard stuff. But, yeah. Okay. Leif, I just want to be clear, um, Steve, because I think there's two different sections here. Okay. We're talking about 2-2, two -two, where yes. there are no estimates. We're not averaging. Yeah, this is the bona fide is, offer. You, know, you have an offer from someone. You're telling the city, I want to sell this. Yeah. And the city says, sell it to me instead. Yeah, so I at I, that price that you already agreed upon. I did query is, the is the really unofficial reading. Yeah, I did query the city's attorney's office about that and the what was the term again? Yeah, the bona fide offer. So I'm not sure of the legalities that are kind of the surround that. Um, perhaps we should have the city's attorney's office here this evening so they could just describe that in more detail. Um, but to my understanding, it's essentially a, a, an offer. That's that's a good idea. We could potentially I'll put that on my notes for action items. So, this questions can be asked of the city attorney at that point. Vice Chair Jordan, um, to that discussion um, with hangar shortages, you could see somebody come in with a uh, exorbitant offer to make a purchase in order to secure a hangar. And yeah. so, if I'm willing to offer a uh, million dollars for a hangar for my Cirrus. And then it comes to the city, but it's not bona fide. Yeah. What happens then? I'm, so that's question one. I'm uh, probably less than qualified. Yeah. So I would ask the city, city attorney. We really wanted that corner piece, and yeah. that million is crazy, but I really need a place to put my brand new plane. So that's yeah. the first question. Second one is um, it does say when the leasee desires to sell, assign, or otherwise transfer. 
and we have a lot of families on the airport uh, with generational units mm -hmm. where the father's passed on uh, or the the older aviator has passed on to the younger aviator. Um, I think it's always been guys though. And um, so in a case like that, that's saying that if dad wants to transfer to a child, mm -hmm. it falls into this trap. So that's my concern. And then number three is the 30 day. Is there any way to reduce that time period to three days? Um, something to keep the deal moving, give the city their chance and keep the deal moving that where the city would already have a threshold of what they would consider that would already be predetermined. So you would just go and look and say, yeah, no, we're not gonna pay a million dollars for a hangar. Yeah. So that that process could be sped up yeah, we'll take, if that yeah. language stays in. But my concerns are that it says even to transfer. Um, yeah, we'll take anything into consideration okay. what the concerns are. Okay. Tell us, please. Well, I, I completely agree. Um, with the vice chair's statements, uh, I think that it should definitely be reduced to at least, you know, a week. Um, additionally, if I have an entity that owns the uh, asset and I want to reincorporate that entity or want to liquidate that through an M and A activity, that could really hurt my business if the city comes in and swoops in. If, if I'm halfway through an M and A, if my company is getting acquired, or whether. I'm just reincorporating into a new entity. So, um, yeah, there is some verbiage that we should make sure that it is actually a third party sale that this uh, applies to, not just the transfer uh, within, you know, an entity with, within a shell company or something like that, right? I take some comfort because I don't think the city can do anything in 30 days, even if we wanted to. I mean, look, look, look at our discussions, but that's, that's, that's just me. Not that I'm advocating to change it, just I'm taking comfort in that. Um, <laughs> Levi, next topic. All right. So next topic that was, so that's the real, the main points that I have in the lease. Honestly, that's kind of the only things that have been touched in there. Now, everything else is from previous leases. So we had um, specific comments from the public earlier on a number of different sections. Um, I wrote notes down in a number of these. Mm -hmm. I, thought, I thought they were reasonable comments. I'd love to, you know, as we're taking them back to the attorneys, to have, bring those into the discussion. Um, if anyone wants to raise any of those publicly right now, board members, that you'd like to talk through them if there is discussion, um, I thought they were pretty reasonable and pretty uh, easy to interpret for you guys to take it back. Vice Chair Jordan, um, hold on a sec. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, I also took note of the items, so I think if we just can uh, get it on the record for the item numbers that were questioned. Um, 3.1 was about initial rent, that it was not an arbitrary, um, and I don't know enough about the topics to discuss them, but just would ask that this be um, evaluated. 3.1, 3.3, uh, that was the discussion about fees that uh, individuals are gonna face the same sorts of fees as commercial operators. 4.3, limited by clauses. Um, and that was, oh, that was the um, having services done on the field uh, by an outside party on the pitot tube inspection. 4.3, experimental aircraft um, and the, the language concerning when an aircraft becomes legitimate. That was 4.5. 4.5, sorry, 4.5. Uh, 5.1, um, that was something without, re oh, that was uh, having to do, uh, meet new requirements without recourse if uh, they were directed, they had to add um, facilities, bathrooms, lofts, um, running water. 5.1.7, uh, that was the requirement to provide half of the money up front for renovation with no commitment to return that money and that definitely jumped out at me as well. Um, 5.2, utilities, that they might, we might be required to connect to utilities was the, the uh, concern. And then 7.1, signage, and that was a First Amendment concern on signage. Those are the ones I had as well. Um, is there any other ones that anyone else would like to raise here? Uh, 
I would um, encourage anyone who has other comments in the public, we have a public invited to be heard at the end, please bring it up. You you know we're not voting on this tonight. It's not too late. Mm -hmm. um, I would encourage you to also email them to Levi so mm -hmm. he has them in writing so you're not relying on, at least in my case, poor handwriting, writing down your comments and trying to interpret them. In that way, we have all of them. Um, Levi, I would ask that you send those onto the board as well. Um, but the appropriate way to contact us is through Levi. So I would encourage you guys to do that as well, please. Any, um, yeah, sorry, but go ahead. No. You, are you good? Yeah, no, I'll add. Um, on 15.1 and 2 about assignments and subletting, um, because that does happen uh, quite a bit, especially with um, aircraft partnerships, as partners come and go out of the partnership and become a tenant uh, through the investment in an aircraft. And that's old language. It's been in there, but I definitely um, question that. And 17.2.3, that the city may also at its sole option repossess the premises, expel the leasee, and remove the leasee's improvements all without liability for trespass or for damage. Um, I, w I do rent at the airport, but I have never seen the lease, and um, that's, that's a pretty strong statement. Um, and then 21.2 under miscellaneous, you're leasing the premises in, in as in condition, um, no warranties that the city is under no obligation to maintain the airport in a particular location or condition, um, yet everything in here tells us what we have to do. And I, I just really didn't see what the city was doing in exchange uh, for the business of the lease. Uh, 21.11, the lease shall extend to and be binding upon the heirs, successors, and assigners. So I think that means legally if you've got a will or something that's designating that. So that was, I noted that because I do, we do have generational uh, pilots on the field. So the thing I got out of it was there were a whole lot of demands and I just as a renter didn't see um, the upside on what the city is offering in exchange for my commitment, my 30 years, my rent on time, my fees and penalties if I do anything wrong. And there's, it's pretty silent to what my rights are um, as a tenant. Thank you, Vice Chair Jordan. Um, Levi, I would suggest at this point we, um, you guys take those back with the attorneys, bring them back, um, and incorporate other feedback as we may receive either later tonight or after tonight. Okay. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to move us on to action items. First one is our rates and fees update. All right. Rates and fees, hopefully this will be a shorter one because nothing has changed since the last time the board made a recommendation. So as you, some of you may recall, um, prior to uh, uh, David unfortunately passing away, um, these came in front of the board uh, and a recommendation was made. Um, in the interim, I've done some research. Uh, research proved that we didn't necessarily need to increase our rates and charges at the airport as we were on par with most of the other airports in the region. Uh, so we were competitive. Um, there was some initial uh, attempts to amend the uh, rates and charges to uh, include um, the ability to, for the city to do in-kind agreements. Um, an alternate course uh, was chosen in order to fill the need that we were going to put that in the rates and charges. So for simplicity's sake, that was removed. Um, and what we returned with was exactly the same document that came before the board um, about a year ago, I think. Um, so the changes that have been made here, the ones, and just to review what was put in front of the board before, um, a small addition was made, um, and there's two options here, I should mention. Uh, on both, option one and option two, a small uh, change was made um, on the lease rate for land to construct improvements and for aeronautical and non-aeronautical, essentially just saying that um, the lease will be 
this price per square foot or whatever the current uh, lease rate is. So that's just to kind of uh, surpass a little accounting headache where let's say, you know, you start a lease, um, in two years you sell it, in the meantime, the consumer price index has gone up um, 3%, and the lease is adjusted slightly up. So if you take the old lease kind of uh, line by line, theoretically applying the new lease, you would have to go back to the old rate. And this just says if you're buying the lease from someone else, you buy it at the rate that they're paying for it. Essentially, it just makes that a little cleaner uh, in our rates and charges. Um, the second thing that was changed in the rates and charges, and this is where it alters from um, option one to option two, uh, was the annual permit fees. Um, these were created mostly, well, for, for anyone's use at the airport, but the kind of the driving factor behind this was for the skydiving operations. Uh, they are by far the ones on the airport that use this um, the most. Um, really what this does, it doesn't increase the rates. It actually it gives a little bit of incentive for um, doing longer term. As you can see, it's broken down here monthly, weekly, daily. Right now, it's essentially just daily. Um, so what they've done here is they've put a little bit more um, into kind of incentivizing uh, someone who would be doing these leases to do it in a longer term and rather a shorter one. Um, the two options vary uh, only on um, what that discount is. Um, I know that there was a, a recommendation made by the board uh, last time on uh, one of these documents and whatever you guys recommend this time, of course, just let us know for that too. I'll, before I open up for discussion, um, the recommendation last time I went back and found the letter I wrote that never got sent. This was July 16th, 21. Dated, we uh, recommended option two of the permit fee. Um, part of the logic was, um, I'll quote my own words, recommendation is based on our belief that the reduced rate provides incentive for users to purchase longer term permits up front, which reduces the administrative burden for the city. It's a calculated to be attractive for the airport's most frequent permit users. The revenue impact to the airport is unlikely to be significantly positive or negative, but the administrative benefit is meaningful. That was at least my summary of what we ended up last time. I'll open the floor, though, um, for anyone who wants to discuss these and ultimately which one we'd like to recommend. Don't all jump at once. <laughs> Vice Chair Jordan. Um, I still agree with that, that it became administratively overbearing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I move that we still recommend option two. There's a motion. Is there a second? Mr. Bliss? No, I second that. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Would anyone like to discuss the motion that's on the floor? We discussed it enough back in uh, 21. Yeah. <laughs> Russell, I see your hand near the thing. Are you going to? <laughs> all right. Well, then, seeing no comments, um, all those in favor of recommending option two, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Action item number two, select two board members for board member selection committee. And pretty straightforward. We're going to be doing, selecting some new members, so we were hoping to find a couple of volunteers who might want to kind of sit and evaluate on that. Um, <laughs> I have both, Steve and I are up, terms are up, as is Melinda, but you can't reapply Melinda. Um, would anyone like to volunteer for this? I am not going to volunteer. <laughs> um, you can do what you'd like to, Steve, and we can vote on it. Would anyone like to volunteer to do that? Vice Chair Jordan. For the record, I will volunteer since my term is, uh, I'm coming up on the limit, so I'm done. Okay. Okay. And Mr. Bliss, anyone else? Um, would anyone, anyone, anyone have an issue with that? I think we probably need a motion. Would anyone like to make the motion for both Steve and Melinda? Talis. I motion that Steve and Melinda are our representatives for selecting new board members. I'll second that. Um, further discussion? I mean, I think you can second it. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 
Any opposed? Thank you both for volunteering. Hope the questions are easy this year. Um, finalized air show date. Yeah, and just as simple as I know we had a, a rather robust discussion uh, last month about that, and um, I know uh, research was done, and I thought we'd just put it out there. Why don't we just go ahead and, you know, as a, a good first step, pick a good date and just kind of bounce it around and, and pick, a, pick a time to put it on the calendar. Excellent. Um, Mr. Robeson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so Tom Larkin and Bob Freeman said their best weekends are the 16th or the 23rd. September. September 16th, September 23rd, 2023, correct? Correct. Okay. It seems like either of those is equally acceptable. Yeah, let's say those is on September 1st. 16th or the 23rd? <coughs> Vice Chair Jordan, I cut you off. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. It'd be Saturday, I'm sure. Let's see. Uh, I'll look up the Saturday. dates. Mm -hmm. Those are both Saturdays. So everybody check their calendar for vacations or anything like that. Uh, Vice Chair Jordan, go ahead. Um, that is good because uh, I just went to the Colorado Springs Air Show, and it was a couple weekends ago, and um, they indicated they probably are, and that's probably it for them. They're not probably going to do another one. Really? So um, those performers would be available, and one performer from Freeman uh, performed down there. But I don't. Th our objective has always been not to be competing with another mm -hmm. one in the area, so we can see what happens. But they they definitely didn't think they could do another one. They had no provisions for 2023. Mm -hmm. So uh, Boulder, we used to alternate with Boulder, so we were on the evens. They were on the odds, I think, and so we could potentially end up on that schedule in the future with Colorado Springs. But right now, I think that was the only one we saw a potential conflict. And uh, they indicated they may not do any more, so they definitely have done nothing to plan for 2023. So I think those dates should be good. So I would note that uh, September 16th is Rosh Hashanah. So there would probably be a bias towards September 23rd to avoid a holiday. Mm -hmm. um, does anyone have any comments, concerns about the 23rd? Levi, you good? Sounds good to me. Would anyone like to make a motion to recommend September 23rd, 2023? Vice Chair Jordan. I recommend <laughs> that we start planning on an air show at Longmont's Vance Brand Airport for September 23rd, 2023. And we will need volunteers. Yes. Uh, Mr. Robeson? Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Congrats. We have a date. <laughs> We're on to our final public invited to be heard. Who wants to kick us off? Whoever's first down. I've... <laughs> Same rules apply as at the beginning. Start with your name and address, please. And uh, I'll have a five-minute timer going. And we'll turn on the microphone. Go on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Don Dulce, 335 Pratt Street, Longmont. Um, it sounds very similar to what I've been through uh, six in my six-year term on the board. Uh, when I first got on the board, I've, I volunteered to work on the rules and regulations. And it only took five years to get them to approved. Uh, and they went back and forth many, many times to the lawyer. And basically what happened was that uh, there were changes made that were contributed to one person who focused their efforts on bringing all those uh, comments into the document. And I was the one that collected all that. And so I'm going to recommend that somebody may be the person other than Levi that would collect all the input from everybody on the airport that's willing to provide it and incorporate it into the document so that it can come back and be distributed to everyone and then go back to the lawyers to uh, fight with them. They typically uh, were only focused, as, as I can see from the discussion, on the city. The document that is the old lease was very biased uh, 
in favor of the city and not not in favor in any way to the tenants on the airport which is really strange to me because the city of Longmont seems to be one that's very open and caring about the residents of the city. And they try to do everything they can to be fair to the citizenry. But this document, as you already have expressed and seen, is very biased. It's all one-sided. Uh, there was an attempt, uh, that, and I worked with a person who wanted to uh, sell their hangar, and they, uh, they wanted to put a, a lease in place that was less biased. And we worked on that quite a bit. And it, it went nowhere. The city wouldn't even uh, entertain the discussion with them. So I, I, my recommendation is to bring this back for discussion a number of times and have one person that would be the focal point to, for collecting all that data and putting it into a Word document that it, it moves forward with red lines so that it can go back and forth to the lawyer. Hopefully it'll be done in less than five years. Thanks. I appreciate your optimism. Um, who would like to come next? Howard Morgan, I was still Howard Morgan uh, <laughs> since the last hour. Hey, on the, on the uh, subject of leases, the city has already put out some 30-year leases with a 30-year extension. This 50-year thing is a, is a suggestion. I've talked to the FAA, which I told you about, and uh, I'll give you the reference to that. I've talked to the AOPA. The OP said there's all kinds of leases all over this country, and nobody has ever been turned down for a grant because of a hangar lease. The FAA man in uh, Seattle said that we don't even get involved in hangar leases. The Greeley manager said the FAA doesn't bother them. They do whatever they want. They've got a 30-year lease extended to 30 years. Now I'm going to be here in 60 years, and none of these other people are, but we have we have heirs, and there's 300 people, 300 owners on the airport that may have various reasons for having a longer lease. And uh, that's why I'd like to campaign for a 30-year lease with a 30-year extension, which we already have. <clears throat> the talk of reversion clause is scary because if you were to have that every year that your lease goes by, your property becomes less valuable. Nobody in their right mind would buy a house with a reversion clause, so at the end of their 30-year mortgage, the mortgage company says, well, we'll take your house, but you can rent it back from us. We don't do any maintenance on it. And... Uh, uh, it's all yours for, for a monthly rent. Nobody's going to do that. And nobody's going to do a hanger like that in their right mind. Might be somebody. So I would discourage that vehemently. You only have to look at Boulder to see what's happened with their reversion clause. They got hangers that you'd have to be desperate to put a hanger, uh, put an airplane in. Uh, uh, number two, the... Uh, uh, condition of the airport, I don't know if any of you are in, have skin in the game, have done any flying around the country, but uh, these people back here and myself have done extensive travel around the country in some foreign countries. And uh, I can tell you that there's towns, many towns out there with a population of 10,000 or less that have gorgeous facilities, really nice where people want to come back. And I can tell you as a, as a former corporate guy that uh, the crews are not in favor of coming here. There's no courtesy car. There's no place to rest. There's no nothing. And uh, so they're coming here because they have to. And I'm sure the uh, business people in the back are not impressed with the city because the airport uh, reflects on the, the whole city. It really does. And I've, been to, uh, I've had a uh, boss that was a big finance guy, went to an airport that was like Longmont, and he said, we're not coming back here. We're just not coming back here. So it's, it makes a difference. So <clears throat> on the uh, runway extension, I was chairman for the, uh, the uh, master plan, and we expanded 
extensive hours, my team and I, and the uh, consultant that we had, J Aviation, on the runway extension. We did several different studies on uh, length, came up with a thousand feet as the most practical, and uh, it can be done. I see uh, some of the comments here like it's impossible. It ain't impossible. Impossible may take a lot longer, but it can be done. Uh, you have to buy a property, and uh, we know who owns the property off the end of the runway. And uh, that was still there when uh, we did the study. And uh, uh, the reason for a longer runway is that these people that are coming in here in business airplanes can't buy fuel uh, to the extent that they'd like to because of the, rent, the length of the runway. Uh, there's a uh, uh, limit to what they can uh, carry depending on temperature and moisture and length of the runway. So a longer runway would get an FBO, a more uh, a positive uh, in income because they can sell more fuel. Plus it's a safety factor. So if anybody wants my references, I'd be glad to give them to you. And uh, I have three references that you can call and ask them what I just told you. And you'll find out that the 50-year thing is a suggestion. It's not a law, Thank not you. a rule, not a regulation. It's a suggestion. Thank you. You're Thanks. right at five minutes. Anyone else tonight? David Schenk, Box 464, Longmont. Um, in hearing about the prairie dog situation, I happen to have a small farm, and, and I can tell you a little bit about prairie dogs. Prairie dogs are really smart. <laughs> um, but one of, the things that's, one of the things that they appear to do, that I've witnessed on my farm, is they'll send out a scout. We had well over 300 prairie dogs when I bought the place. We managed to get rid of them. And over the years, we've been there for 42 years, they will send somebody over to see whether this is a nice place to live. And if you take care of that one prairie dog, you won't have any trouble for the next year or two. And the Longmont Airport at one time probably had a 1,000 prairie dogs. Um, Rose, I can't tell you Rose's last name, tried to trap them, was somewhat successful. Eventually the FAA got on their case. The prairie dogs were pretty much eliminated. And, and the problem is we don't watch them weekly. They will show up. And if you get rid of them, within a day or two, none of them will come. They won't go back and tell the rest of them, hey, here's a good home. So let's, let's be proactive on this and work on it every week, every day. And, and people at the airport are more than willing to report a prairie dog when they see him. And if you get rid of him quick, you've solved your problem. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Steve Shook, 2022 Braeburn Court, Longmont. Uh, first off, I don't think the first right of refusal is a good idea. Number one, if I wanted to sell it to a friend of mine, I'm stuck. It, it, that's not fair. That's, you know, we buy these hangers in good faith that the city is going to treat us right. But a lot of the the uh, things on the lease, you know, I think they're more directed at larger airports. Longmont is a small airport. I came from Monterey. You have TSA, FAA. Everybody's involved in your business along with the management. Uh, I've had meetings with TSA, uh, you know, my hangar complex. You know, I'm in an AOA area. And, uh, I've, you know, like I said, I've built on non-AOA and AOA. Um, you know, first right of refusal, uh, 
it, it just takes all your control away. Why be there? I mean, uh, I'll rent a hangar. I'm not going to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars and then be dictated by the uh, airport management or the city of Longmont. So I would strongly consider all of those things because, you know, I've seen a lot of airports really fall in disrepair. And, you know, Longmont, let's face it, I mean, it's an eyesore. Uh, I bought it because I live a mile down the street. But, uh, you know, it is absolutely an eyesore. And I know Levi's, you know, been directed to, you know, clean it up. But, you know, all the asphalt there, there's weeds growing out of almost every asphalt crack. It's just an ugly mess. So I would really consider a lot of these upgrades you're talking about, you know, uh, I think you need to address before you start charging everybody, you know, which, you know, lease reversions and, and uh, buybacks and all that stuff. I mean, we're living in the slums, to be honest with you. So anyway, my opinion. Thanks. Thank you. Here I am again, Dave Paul, 3500 Berkeley Avenue, Boulder, Colorado, and I've got a hangar out at Longmont. And I was going to go, I had one more comment on the lease, it's paragraph 9.1, and it says that I've, for things like insurance and stuff, I've got 10 days to give you the data. Make that 30 days, we're dealing with a third party. If, if you insist on 10 days, it's probably not going to happen. And Ms. Jordan, I want to thank you for your uh, good note taking and thank everybody else and the airport manager for serving. Appreciate the time. And here's a copy of a note that I actually mailed to Thank you very much. I'm not seeing anybody else, but I really don't want to cut anyone off. Have I missed anybody? Okay. Seeing nobody else, we'll close the final public invited to be heard. And we've got board, council, and staff comments, starting with board members. Mr. Robeson. Thank you. Um, Levi, I didn't mean to put you in the hot seat. I realize you're in between the lawyers and us, but I do think it would be a good idea to get them here. If, there, if it took five years, I mean, let's get them here and try to do it faster than that in person. Yeah, that's on the notes for next, when we actually have an action item on it. I'd be curious to meet these people. I mean, these are the same lawyers that are telling us we can't have a direct question and answer with the members of the public. So I'm real curious to see what they look like in person. I've been on a Teams call with them. And it's not the same, but um, I think to that point, Levi, I would certainly... I, I'm not convinced we'll be at the point for an action item next month. Okay. Um, maybe we get this resolved really quickly. It's sent around and, you know, we don't get other comments, but I'm just not anticipating that's likely. So my guess is we're going to be an informational item again next month. Um, and I would still encourage you to have the city attorneys here mm -hmm. at that point, not just when it's an action item. Okay. Fair? Okay. Anyone else? Should we talked out? Um, city Council Representative, Council Member Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a, a, a few more informational things. Um, uh, First Amendment rights um, are, are not universal. You know, if like the owner of a newspaper gets to um, decide what you publish in his newspaper, Facebook gets to decide what you publish in Facebook, the um, city regulates signage inside the city so, um, uh, you know, unless it's objectionable, I'm not sure that, that there'd be a problem with putting signage on a hangar, but there are, uh, it is something that is, is governed by city code. So, yeah, and it's, it's, not, it's not a First Amendment issue. Um, let's see, what was, I had to more. Um, uh, Oh, 
a suggestion that we have a copy of the or of the lease that's being used now, because um, it does seem like a lot of stuff's gotten, you know, has has crept in. But it may be that nobody just has looked at it in twenty years or however mm -hmm. long it's been at their lease. So let's let's get a copy of the of the of the current lease uh, and maybe get it out to people so that we can do some comparison. Um, and uh, and then uh, the final thing about about attorneys is that <laughs> is their job it, it and mostly can they consider it their only job which I don't actually agree with and I harangue them at every opportunity but it's their job to to protect the city from liability so they're gonna do this it doesn't mean they're bad people it just means they're lawyers and you know at least some of the time there's a distinction. <laughs> so I just wanted everybody to know that, but I'm, I am you know, really glad to see robust, meaningful discussion on this, and I really look forward to robust, meaningful discussion on, um, on electrification. There are two things. One is the state of the sustainable aviation industry that needs to be, you know, everybody that isn't following it with bated breath probably needs to know because it is a real point of investment for the city that would be a way to get, uh, you know, more nice things for the airport. Um, and uh, then the other thing is that there, uh, we need somebody, we're, you know, we're, we're in the process of doing uh, co uh, code updates to su for sustainable electrification for the whole city. And so everybody's going to need to be informed about what that is going to do because, you know, if your hangar is old, you probably can't put a solar panel on it, for example. Um, but uh, you can build a hangar so that you can, and, and there, are, you know, there are code issues like that that we'll need to be aware of. So when planning the agenda, I think... Um, those things both need to be in there. Thank you. Leva, did you want to respond to any of those? I mean, I think I agree with all of that. Yeah. You just certainly will uh, take that into consideration, and we'll, we will talk that more about that when it comes up. And I would also second the appreciation for really good feedback and discussion tonight. Um, I feel like we often have these meetings and there is no public comment and to go into a lease document like this literally section by section with meaningful substantive comments was I, I think really informative for all of us um, and appreciate everybody who commented on them and trust that you will keep coming with the comments particularly when it comes back next month and there are other things in there we don't we don't like or there are things that didn't change so just want to say thank you for all, for that. Um, Mr. Do you have something else? Yeah. Councilmember Martin, go ahead. Sorry, I knew Steve. I had one more thing. I always also want to express my appreciation for the two of you who are now termed out because you've both done really brilliant jobs uh, in my experience, and I, I hope everybody everybody appreciates all of that work. Mr. I'm sorry, Steve, I turned you off. Can you hit the button again? And I'll turn you back on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I hit the wrong button. Uh, just a couple of comments. The first one is, next meeting, I'd like to see some more justification for this right of first refusal on the lease. I, I just don't get that one at all. And I agree with the comments from the gallery. And secondly, I want to say that I did some contracting when I was in L.A., I'm, airline pilot, but I had a second job. And <clears throat> you don't put the first floor on a house till you build the foundation. And here at Longmont Airport, we haven't done that. I agree with the uh, comments from the gallery here. The airport is in terrible shape, and we need to put it in good shape before we start looking at advancing into the new generation of aviation with sustainable fuel, you know, SAF, and electrification, got to get an FBO, we got to upgrade the fuel pit, and 
until we do that, um, the airport, we're not attracting the, the type of people we need at the airport. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Bliss. Um, staff comments? Levi, Phil? I think I'm good at the moment. I have a couple of comments just based on some of the earlier comments from, from folks. Um, first of all, the budget being in the packet, that was something that I believe was addressed when Joni Marsh was uh, running, kind of running the airport board in the interim with Jeff Kohler, or Coleman, sorry, excuse me. And so I, th I need to go back and look at what, what was happening there, but I thought that that had been agreed to not be part of the packet, but we can talk about how that gets back in the packet. So I'll chat with her about that, but I thought that had been decided. So that, my confusion there. That wasn't my understanding, at least, Phil. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it, we, we had a kind of different format for a little bit. It fell off. We were kind of okay with it temporarily falling off. Okay. Um, that's I certainly good to understand. didn't understand it to be permanent. Great. That's good to understand. And I wanted to personally apologize for the agendas not getting out to folks. We don't know who they go out to. We assume they go out to all of you, of course. Uh, we're not sure where they go as far as going to the airport board, but we did have that out on Monday, I believe, by noon. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do try to give you as much time as, you know, the four or five days. I really try to get it out before the weekend, so you have the weekend to look at it as well. But um, the, current, the, the current standard practice had always been get it the week of the meeting, and so we have folks who are still doing that level of, of getting the agendas out. So my apologies to everyone in the audience who did not receive notification that that packet was out there. We'll make sure in our next round that we get it to the folks who need to see it. So thank you very much. Um, i ask you about that. So when we were um, online and our meetings were online, we had a specific instruction that we could not forward the packet to anybody. And that was because the invite had to go out for the public and it, it was not okay for us. So we were told we could not forward it. Can we forward now that we're back in person? Um, my suggestion would be to, there's a link to the, um, all, the, all the agendas that are out there for the city. So my, my recommendation, we, we could send that link to anybody who wants it and they can find the airport board in the list of, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's based by the date. So mm -hmm. you'll, you might see a, a council packet in there and, mm -hmm. and you guys also run on the same week as my transportation advisory board. Mm -hmm. So, okay. and we're looking for members of that too, if anybody is interested. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so, so there's a lot of competing packets, but obviously in that week, uh, you'll see the airport board right, right there for Thursday. Thank you. But I think you can forward it too, if you want. I mean, yeah, if you get it. That we yeah. came in through one gate exactly. and everybody else came through You're another. You're correct. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Phil, for bringing that up and kind of proactively taking care of it. Um, last call for anyone else? All right. We'll call this, uh, this meeting adjourned then. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening.